And there are various different types of conventions for an opening sequence. So firstly, there would be an ident at the beginning of the opening sequence, showing the studio's name, which helps spread their name, but also claim the film. One example of a famous ident would be the universal ident, which comes around the globe. Um, I think this is a very powerful ident, and it really stands out the company's name. Um, another one would be Optimum Releasing, which I took inspiration from, the way it flashes around the screen. They're also a smaller film company and um, produce majority action and crime films. So that was very useful for me in uh, understanding how I should use an ident. Eventually leading me to create this one. Next, there would be a title credits. For example, in this clip of Skyfall with Daniel Craig, or this 1993 classic opening to sequence to Reservoir Dogs. This shows the actors in the movie and helps attract an audience, as people are more likely to watch a film if they know their favourite actors will feature, thus making it important to make acting credits clear from the beginning of the sequence. I also use titles at the beginning to show the actors and give them credit at the beginning of the film. Now for conventions of action slash crime genres of film. Firstly, they are often shot in the dark and use a mysterious soundtrack to increase the dark atmosphere of the film. This is portrayed here in a clip taken from Zero Dark Thirty. Similarly to this clip, I entrenched my sequence in the dark through a series of establishing shots during the night and played my self-made soundtrack on top to replicate the same foreboding effect. Another convention of an opening sequence would be to create a main character. Um, I also did this by giving Ainsley, Monty Tremlett, the majority screen time and placing him in a position that draws the audience's sympathy. So this is similarly done in many films, including the famous Die Hard, by focusing on John McClane. Yet, I also challenged this convention as Ainsley is killed at the end of the sequence. This was done to leave the audience with questions and in a state of confusion where they would want to watch more. A definite convention of an action or crime genre is that it would have an attractive female lead. For example, the 2015 action film Divergent starred Shailene Woodley, partly to draw in male audiences by utilising her appearance. How I, however, have chosen to have an all-male cast to challenge conventions by not relying on a female figure to draw in audiences and instead focus on the violence and the action of the film. Moving on, the use of guns and other weapons in an action or crime genre is common for creating excitement and bloodshed. This convention is prolifically used in the legendary Godfather Mafia film of 1972. Like this clip when Michael shoots McCluskey in the restaurant, I also utilise the convention of guns to enhance my sequence at the end when Ainsley is killed by a raging hand. Many action and crime films use explicit language. This adds a degree of realism to the film by portraying a raw stereotype of a criminal or roguish hero, which is that they have a crude way of speaking and are often aggressive or insubordinate. This is exemplified in the 1994 Tarantino classic Pulp Fiction through the two main characters of Vincent Vega and Jules Winfield. I have also chosen to use expletives in Captive to lend my opening sequence more characteristics of a real media product. Where the fuck am I? Didn't fucking know her! Blame you the fuck. Finally, in many real media products, the director will choose to use a series of short and sharp shots to create an exciting effect. This can be seen in Fast and Furious 7, in the car skyscraper fight scene, when director James Wan used over 20 shots in under 10 seconds. However, as you can see in the same amount of time, I used only one shot in Captive, compared to over 20. This challenges the norm for action or crime films, as I focus on details of the plot, rather than purely the action. That's all for evaluation question one, and thank you for watching.